Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. Not really in the way where you think I'm just going to attack Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden is what he is, man. Um, look, if the dude... I don't know the whole story behind everything that was on the laptop. I've heard there was some creepy, disturbing stuff on there. I don't know because I haven't seen that. I mean, that's to me, that's just hearsay. Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. Also, let me throw it out there is, you know, one, one thing that I think gets lost on people that are in the opposite political party when they want to attack Hunter Biden is that we're all just human here, right? Hunter Biden's just a dude and he happened to have a drug problem for a while. Okay. I don't know if the guy is clean now. If he is, you know, I wish him all the best. If he isn't, I wish him all the best. You know, it's people have problems with chemicals, with food, all of this doesn't necessarily indict somebody's character. Now, there's some other things, if I had prepared more, I could go into and talk about, I, sus the, the, I suspect his character isn't that great. But again, I don't know the guy. I could actually sit down at a bar across, next to Hunter Biden, grab a beer and be like, yeah, you're Hunter Biden. Like, yeah, and I might sit there and have a great conversation with the dude, I don't know. Something that should also factor in is that when he was a kid, <clears throat> he experienced a TBI from everything that I've read. Now, that can have a dramatic effect on your personality as you grow up. So what I'm basically saying in the beginning of this video is I'm not really judging the illicit substance use. I, I would be a hypocrite if I did. You know, I love to drink beer, one substance or the other. I mean, you're still, you're still getting high, whether it's with alcohol or whatever it is. If you like, you know, to smoke crack, I don't know, whatever he's into. But the point of the fact is of this whole thing and everything that came out of it is that Hunter Biden turned in a laptop to a store. Now, that store held it for a year and a half or however long that it held it. If it was longer than that, I don't exactly recall. And at the end, he went in there, he found some disturbing stuff. He tried to give it over to the FBI. Now, the problem with all of this that I have isn't Hunter Biden and his activities. Hunter Biden is a grown ass man. And if he wants to do drugs, I don't have a problem with it. I also... Don't think that should affect the candidate for the president of the United States because his son may or may not have a substance abuse problem. I'm not going into the more creepy allegations for a reason because it's really not about Hunter, as I said earlier. The problem I have with the entire Hunter Biden laptop story is we have an article here. There is... They're as slow as Joe. Sleepy New York Times finally wakes up and admits Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop is real. A year after DailyMail.com authenticated its contents and broke dozens of stories about his shady dealings. This is correct. I remember reading an article on the Daily Mail about this. And the problem begins, again, is not his laptop. The problem is the cover-up. The cover-up is generally worse than the crime. Although, you know, some of the things that Ted Bundy did are, yeah, he covered him up, man. I, I mean, I don't actually think in that case, the cover up is worse than the crime. The crime is the worst thing that happened. The cover up is just logic for him trying to not, to not get in trouble for the awful things that he did. The problem is, is that you had big tech and you have them colluding with the Democratic Party in burying this story. I mean, to the point that a person got kicked off of Twitter, 
Facebook would shut down and suspend anybody sharing an article, even if it's from a reputable source. Now, make fun of the Daily Mail all you want, but in the end, I'm going to look at you and be like, "Eh, the Daily Mail's got its problems, but I probably trust the Daily Mail more than I trust CNN. All right? And, you know, and always remember, when I'm reading an article, I read it for the bias of the author in what the author is saying. So I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. If you start out an article with, let me tell you why kids need gender affirming surgery or gender affirming care. Immediately off the top, I know you're trying to convince me in this article that, you know, it, it's okay to give kids chemicals. Right? So I know where you stand on it. That I mean, that's a different issue I'm not going to go into, but I know where you stand on it. Right? I know that you're probably left-leaning and you're irrationally progressive, and I'm not going to take anything you say serious. Now, you can write an article where you don't pretend to be other than anything other than biased, but you're reasonable, and I can read that article and go Yeah, I mean, I don't agree with some of the points in this article, but I do agree with a lot of the overall sentiment or vice versa. You know, I don't agree with the overall sentiment, but I do agree with certain points that you make. Great. That's fine. If we're going to live in a free society, if that's the game that we're running on, right, this is one of the, this is one of the biggest problems. There's two sets of rules. There's rules for the wealthy and the connected, and there's rules for you and I as normal people. I don't agree to that, and I don't, like if we were sitting around in a small tribal community trying to figure out the best way to govern the tribe, there's no possible way you're going to be sitting there going, oh, oh, so the the two people at the top, they basically get to do whatever they want and there's no consequences for it. But you're going to hold me accountable for these rules. Like, you know, they can come in and take a dump on my chest while I'm sleeping and there's no punishment and I can't do anything about it. You know, or this guy can just pee all over my food and there's nothing I can say about it. I'm going to look at you and I'm going to go, I don't agree to those rules. I don't agree at all. So we're at an impasse here, you know, and then generally how people would solve that is with violence and one side would win. Well, or talking it out the preferred way. But we get to a point here where big tech in the media actively colluded to affect a presidential election. Now, I've read some polls that have suggested that had the Hunter Biden laptop story got out, there's some people that wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden. I believe that. Do I do I think that it could have possibly affected who was president? Yes, but I don't have any proof of that because you would have to go back in time, release the Hunter Biden laptop story and compare that to current events. No matter what polling suggests, you still don't know whether Biden would have won or lost if that story was out there. But the problem is, the problem with this is, is that it shows clear bias in the fact that you were trying to affect the presidential election, which in my own opinion should be illegal. You shouldn't have one side, you shouldn't have one side with the power to actively ban Uh, information from coming out about a candidate or a family member and then have the power to ban that person from a platform because it's news that you don't like. You know, and it's, to me, it begins to, look, if I'm Superman tomorrow, right, and I'm the benevolent ruler of the planet, I'm going to look at big tech and I'm going to say, you know, I'm satisfied with the uh, 230 or whatever it is protections that you have as long as you stop trying to silence one side of the debate. And if you don't, I'm going to come down and I'm going to crack down hard on you, which brings me to like the final point of my rant. 
if we're going to operate in this game, I know that the United States and the West uses propaganda. Okay? I don't know that Western propaganda is the worst form of propaganda. It's definitely not the worst form of propaganda out there. All I'm saying is that all people use propaganda. I am going to try to portray myself in the best light in the media. Okay, that's fine. But it gets into the problem of silencing dissent. And if the game is rigged so that one side of the aisle gets to make up rules as they go along, they get to silence people that might say something that affects who they want to win an election. Because if this goes, if they can do this at the level of the presidential election, what is to stop them from doing it to smaller elections? You know, local elections where most of the politicians basically have no recourse. And, you know, the blue haired gender studies land whale that facts checks on Facebook doesn't like the fact that whatever, a local Republican is running for mayor of the town. So they try to put out their advertising campaign and then they just shut it down at Facebook so that the only person who is allowed to speak and make their points is the person with the D in front of their name. And if you switch it around to Republican versus Democrat, I would be here saying the exact same thing. If it was one of Donald Trump's kids who was, you know, had incriminating pictures on his laptop and information and all of the media colluded to bury that story, I would be here saying the exact same thing. Like, we can't have this. Because what it eventually will do is this. If you want to cause a civil war, I hate talking about a civil war because it's stupid. War is stupid. But if you want to talk about how you could possibly break up the United States for lack of a better term, it would be if one side felt that they didn't get a say in anything. And that's how it's operating right now. And I mean, if you even look at the machine going into action now, they're doing things straight out of the Iraq war playbook that I don't agree with. And a lot of Republicans are doing that now too, where they call you a traitor in treasonous if you don't support a war in the Ukraine, which I don't support any wars anymore, right? Unless you're directly bombed, like unless the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor again, I'm not supporting a war. I just, sorry. I just don't think that the United States has the resources or should be sacrificing its youth for places across the globe. Now, you might be able to change my opinion on that if you can offer me a logical response to my to my statements in which, well, let me tell you how this is going to spread to the United States. We fight it over there. We fight it over here. Okay, fair enough. You might be able to convince me. But one way you're not going to convince me that your argument is right is if you silence me, kick me off of social media, because it's at that point, I know I'm on to something. I know you have something to hide. It's the great line from Game of Thrones. You cut out a man's tongue. You don't prove him to be a liar. You just prove you fear what he has to say. And there you go. That's basically what Twitter Facebook, Google, all of these big tech companies did is they cut out the tongue of the person trying to tell you that, hey man, there's this laptop. I tried to get over to the FBI, but they weren't taking it. And then on top of it, we get into, is there possible government corruption that Project Veritas had their place raided because they were in possession of the laptop. Now, I don't know what the legality is behind that. I do know this. Law enforcement in the United States has a bad habit of having to, overshow, to overdo the show of force. Listen, I'm not, I, I'm not, I haven't been in trouble 
with law enforcement in any significant way in my entire life, right? If you think that I have the Hunter Biden laptop, you know I have it. You show up at my house. All you need to do is send a few patrol officers, right? I, I'm not going to, and I get, you don't know that, but uniformed officers showing up, you refuse to cooperate. That's when you send in the SWAT team. I don't need an army of ninjas coming through my door with flashbang grenades and they're like, where's the Hunter Biden laptop? It's over on the counter, dude. What are you doing? Stop pointing a gun at me. All you had to do was serve me a subpoena and I would have turned the laptop over to you. You know, like, what do you mean? Well, we're afraid you could have destroyed the evidence. Why would I destroy the evidence when I'm trying to hand it over to the media? Well, we like to dress up like ninjas and break into people's homes. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's basically how that works. Like you just like dressing up like a ninja and coming in. That's what that's really about. You can't make a salient point on why that's necessary for the Project Veritas guys. But anyways, that's my thoughts. I don't know what you think. If you enjoyed this rant or not, I don't know. Let me know. I just think we're in dangerous territory and I don't understand the logic behind a lot of this because here's the thing the truth always comes to light it really does I, it's better to get out ahead of it you know it's would have been better for biden to come out and just say yeah i don't and that that goes into the business dealings that was in there too you know some of that is really shady and it should be investigated if you want to tell me that everybody is equal under the law, then it should not matter what somebody's station is in life, whether it be the president of the United States or a janitor at Walmart. If somebody's done wrong and you want to tell me that we hold people accountable in the United States of America, then you hold everybody accountable or you just get into the situation that we're in now where I just don't believe anything that you say. And I think that's a vast majority of the public where they're just like, what? Get out of here with that. And then the powers that be wonder why nobody believes them when they come out and they tell the truth about Russia invading the Ukraine. And there we are. So anyways, like and subscribe or don't and I'm out.